to start by introducing myself. Uh, I'm the Equine Commodity Specialist for USDA APHIS BS Center for Epidemiology and Animal Health. And I want to let you know that you can review the overall study design for the NOMS Equine 2015-2016 study in a separate training module that's on AgLearn, and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later on. The purpose of this training module is to provide an update on the status of the NOMS Equine 2015-2016 study as of the fall slash winter of 2015. So on this slide, you can see the objectives for the study, and these were developed through multiple means, uh, stakeholder input. Uh, we had a general uh, website that people could give us input on priorities for the study. And the first one is to describe trends in equine care and health management for the study years. So we've had two previous equine NOM studies, 1998 and 2005. So the data we're collecting on general equine health management for 2015 can be compared to uh, the results that we had from those two previous studies. The subsequent objectives that you can read on this slide are specific to the 2015 study, and you can see that they're quite diverse. The next slide has a map uh, with highlighted in color the states that are included in the NOMS 2015 study. And although some of the states are the same as in 98 and 2005, some are different in 2015 based on their equine populations. We also have them highlighted in four different colors to show you uh, regions that we plan to report results by, so west, south central, northeast, and southeast. So phase one of the study is what we call the NAS component, uh, questionnaires administered by National Agriculture Statistics Services representatives through an in-person interview with equine operations in order to gather data about general equine health management. Data collection uh, ended for phase one in the end of July of 2015. There were 3,998 equine operations selected by NAS for participation in the study. And they were selected off of the 2012 census slash list frame of equine operations with five or more equine. We had 2,466 operations that provided the status of their equine operation. 1,918 of those provided equine health data, while 548 had no resident equine or were out of business and recognize there was a three-year gap between the 2012 census and list frame and the 2015 data collection. We had uh, just under 700 operations that refused to participate. We had 750 operations that were considered inaccessible. And NAS does, uh, enumerators, uh, make multiple phone calls to each of the selected operations, and they actually do a drive-by generally uh, before they consider it inaccessible. We had 66 which were office hold and we had 17 that were considered out of scope. So phase one, or the NAS component, uh, the questionnaire data entry and validation uh, was uh, completed by NAS in September of 2015. NOMS now has the data in-house and we're doing further data validation and analysis to create reports of the findings. Once the validation and analysis is completed, we will develop a part one report which will contain tables with results from phase one of the study, along with text boxes that help people interpret the contents of the tables. We'll also develop what's called a trends report, and that's where we'll be comparing the results of the 2015 study to those collected in 1998 and 2005. And if you remember, uh, that's one of the first objectives for the 2015 study. So phase two is what we call the VMO component. And data will be collected on site uh, with a visit from a VMO and or animal health technician. And this will be a second more in-depth questionnaire that was designed in order to meet the objectives of the study. 
This also is part of the biologics component and there will be a biosecurity assessment offered to the operations and that biosecurity assessment will be conducted by the VMO that visits the operation. So of the 1,918 operations that are eligible for the VMO component, so they had to have completed the NAS questionnaire and have equine on May 1st of 2015 to be eligible for phase two, just about 50% agreed to be contacted for participation in phase two of the study. As you remember, the original plan was to begin phase two of the study in August of 2015. So as soon as NAS had completed their data collection and we knew which operations were willing to participate in phase two. However, VS management made a very difficult decision, but appropriate decision to postpone phase two of the study based on their current and future commitment of personnel to the highly pathogenic avian influenza outbreak. So stakeholders were notified uh, by a memo that was developed and signed by the Center for Epidemiology and Animal Health Director, Dr. Bruce Wagner. And this was sent to points of contact at the American Horse Council, the American Association of Equine Practitioners, the State Horse Councils, and the uh, State Veterinarians Group. Uh, the equine operations agreeing to be contacted for phase two, so remember that's about 950 operations, were each sent a personalized letter explaining the postponement. They were also offered the option to participate in the parasite testing because this component of the study did not rely on a VMO to collect the samples. So the parasite component of the study, um, operations were asked to complete a short general uh, survey about their internal parasite management. So essentially what we did was take the parasite questions off of the VMO questionnaire and sent that out to the operations that agreed to participate in the parasite part of the study. And also uh, we got them to sign a consent form for this phase of the study. These operations that uh, completed the questionnaire and signed the consent form for the parasite phase of the study were then sent kits to allow them to collect feces on up to six equine, pre-deworming and post-deworming. We also collected individual animal information along with um, the general management of parasites on the operation. So we gave detailed instructions for sample collection. So we call this a storybook, and we had an excellent photographer that got this first image of a horse defecating, and then showing a collection of fresh feces, uh, and then how to complete the forms and ship the samples to the laboratory. There were also detailed written instructions uh, for the equine operations related to uh, sample collection and form completion. So as I said, we had individualized demographic information on the equine tested, including the antomanthic that they used at the time. And Dr. Martin Nielsen's lab at the Gluck Equine Research Center performed all the testing. And Dr. Nielsen also had a very good idea that they operations be asked to include one container of what they used. So even if they recorded the product uh, on the forms, we also had an empty container to know which product they had just used. As of November 24th, 2015, we had 116 equine operations that had been shipped kits. So these are ones that had completed the parasite questionnaire and consent form. Results are prepared and interpretation of the tests um, are done and then each operation is mailed an individualized report. So the plan for phase two of the study, NOMS is planning to initiate phase two of the study in the spring of 2016. We recognize it's contingent on the availability of adequate personnel, both here at NOMS and in the field to be able to collect the data uh, that we need to complete the objectives for this study. Just to remind you, uh, we did have a conference call related to the VMO questionnaire and the biologics already to let you know the sections of the VMO questionnaire and these again uh, were developed to meet the study objectives. The first is a short inventory, then also collection of very detailed information about the vaccination practices. 
We also ask about any parasite problems the operation has had and what they do for general parasite control. We ask about their observation of any tick-related diseases and what they do for tick control on the operation. There's a section on the occurrence of lameness and management practices for those lamenesses, and then an economic section that's very tailored toward equine health care costs. The biologics and biosecurity assessment are another part of the VMO visit. So there'll be a tick exam offered to the operations on up to 10 equine and collection of ticks found on the resident equine. These ticks will then be shipped to the National Veterinary Services Laboratory for identification and each operation will receive a report regarding the tick identity. We also want to try to collect blood to create a serum bank for future research and collect demographic information about the horses from which we collect blood. We're also offering a biosecurity assessment, which we consider an incentive for participation in this study. And this will be done by the VMO and animal health technician during their visit to the operation. And the operation will receive a report of those results. For those operations that didn't participate in the parasite testing in the fall of 2015, we're again going to offer the parasite testing as an option. The VMO's role will be to drop off the kits. There's two kits, one for the pre-deworming samples and one for the post-deworming samples, and to briefly go over uh, sample collection and form completion with the operation. But it'll be the equine operators that'll collect those samples because they're done at the time of the next deworming. And then we're also going to try to do fecal cultures uh, on equine from a subset of operations. This will only be offered to a subset of operations in order to stay within the capacity of the laboratory in Athens, Georgia that does the culturing. Any positive salmonella results will be sent to the operations. There will also be antimicrobial susceptibility testing of salmonella and non-type specific E. coli but these results will not be reported back to the operation. So this slide just shows the building here in Fort Collins where the NOMS group works from, also has uh, some of the people that um, have previously been in the western region. And our group working on survey development, uh, data entry, getting our kits ready to go out for the parasite testing, and then one of our students that's working with us who helped develop the storybook for the parasite testing.